Hello, Christopher. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show how I cut your lenses, your transition bifocal lenses, for your Ray-Ban 5121 color 2000 size 50, which is the shiny black. Of course, you get your Ray-Ban Wayfarer case, and this is your Ray-Ban Wayfarer frame. Comes with a little plastic sleeve. I'm going to send you all the original packaging and the original demo lenses that come in it. I'm just going to add one more sleeve to the right side for shipping. So let's get everything ready for cutting. By the way, in your Ray-Ban case, you get a black Ray-Ban cloth. That will be included as well as one of my cleaning cloths and instructions on how to care for them. So the first thing I'm going to do for your Ray-Bans is to pop out the original demo lenses. I'm going to take those out real quick. And then... I'm going to trace the shape of your frame in my Santinelli LE1000 edger. It is now tracing the right lens. And then it's going to pop over and trace the left. Because here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, everybody loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You are getting the unbreakable bulletproof, bulletproof up to 22 caliber that is, and has both UVA and UVB protection, but that is you're getting the unbreakable polycarb lenses for your frame, so you can be as rough as you want to with them. So I'm going to pull up the shape of your lens here, put in the pupillary distance. I'm actually going to cut four millimeters below center. I'll explain that in a moment. This is a polycarbonate lens being cut for a, a plastic frame. So to speed things up, because I have a 20 minute window here on YouTube, um, and I want to show you how your trans lens, transition lenses turn dark. I went ahead and put a block on the first lens. Just to speed things up so we can do this in under 20 minutes. It is now 7.56, Wednesday, February 19th, 65 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina. At least according to my Samsung Gear watch. So the first thing that's happened is I put your lens inside the lathe, the chuck. And the LMU is tracing the shape of your lens onto the frame. It traces the concave side first, which is closest to the eyelashes, and now it's tracing the convex side. The actual cutting wheel is this lighter color wheel on the left. This That's going to grind away most of the lens. This wheel on the right with the little channel in there is going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the frame. Now this is going to get loud while it's cutting, but I do want you, I'm going to have to close the door, but for now I want you to see the lens strike the cutting wheel. We are underway. So that little white block that you saw sitting on your lens, this is what holds it in place while it is cutting. I'm going to put a double-sided adhesive sticker. The black side is the sticky. It's a little 3M pad. I pull off the front side and then I put your lens into the blocker as it is called and I'm going to go four millimeters below center. There it is lined up and ready to go. Let me get all your stuff ready for shipping. These are your original demo lenses that came out of there. I include these because years from now, if you ever want to sell your frame, you got the original demo lenses to keep the value high. And of course, I'm going to put the, the sleeve on there for shipping purposes. Now your, your polycarbonate lenses cut dry. There will be a cycle where water splashes on it later to clean off any debris. But plastic and high index lenses cut wet, polycarbonate cuts dry. And as we get closer to your original, the final shape, I will open the door so you can watch some of this happen. This is a great high quality classic looking frame. I call it the Buddy Holly, although it goes by many names. This is the Ray-Ban 5121, size 50. Hopefully you can see that on there if the lighting is just right. If my GoPro camera is good enough. So this machine costs about $30,000. It weighs about 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and get one and put it on your kitchen table so you can cut lenses. And I can come over to your house and cut your lenses for you. Or teach you how to do it. So we are getting closer to its final shape. One thing you will notice is the edge of the lens is completely flat like a nickel. It could stand up on its own. Now it's actually putting the bevel onto the lens. After this is done, I'm going to test to make sure it is the right size. I always start a little bit large 
and then bring it down as needed. The golden rule of carpentry, you can always cut more off of a board, you can never add back onto it. So I start slow. Once I get the size right for the right lens, I flip it over and cut the left. By the way, Christopher, or as I like to refer to you as the Blade Man, you are my neighbor in Norfolk, Virginia. I'm, I'm your southern cousin here in Durham, North Carolina. We're only about three, three and a half hours drive apart. I love it up there in Norfolk. The naval bases, the military yards, watching the planes and the jets take off, the C-130s. Of course, was I doing that at Hampton News? I think that was, just outside Hampton. Forgive me, forgive me. I have been to Norfolk several times. I'm just getting my trips confused. <coughs> so now the water has kicked in to wash away any optical sawdust or debris that is on the edge of the lens. Of course, it's just a waste of time because I'm going to actually make more in just a moment. So your lens is done. One thing I need to do is grab a paper towel so I can dry your lens off and make sure it's not slippery because, you know, honestly, it's embarrassing when I drop a lens on live TV. So, I've got this out. There's still a little bit of rough edges. It's close to your shape here. Um, that shape right there. How's that match up for the computer? But uh, I've got my hand stone where I'm going to put what's known as the safety bevel. I'm going to go around the lens and take off any of the last sharp edges. And you can see this white substance around the lens. If you've seen any of my videos, you see me scrape it off onto the counter, and then once it's on the counter, wipe it on the floor. I love saying this, kids. I am a professional. I went to school for years to learn how to wipe stuff on the floor. Don't think you can just do it yourself at home on the first day. I am a professional, all right? Okay, so in order to test to see if the lens is the correct size, I tuck it in at the outside corner, and using my thumbs, I push down at the edges, and it snaps in perfectly. So I am going to cut the left lens now. Flip this over to the left. Put that in there and this is going to repeat the steps that you have seen before. Where the LMU is going to trace the shape of your left lens on there to make sure it's large enough to cut out. as the term I use. Now the lens is large enough but this is just a routine step the machine does every time. There's no way to avoid this. There's no way to getting around it. You know, for, $30,000 you think I could do it quicker but no it's gonna do this every single time just to make sure that I'm a good optician so once this gets started I'm gonna show you what I do to prep or double check the prescription of the right lens to make sure everything works well take that block out I'm going to de-block the lens which means I'm gonna take your block off I'm not gonna knock your block off I'm gonna pull it off using suction Pull off that little adhesive sticker, toss that, dry that off. And one thing I'm going to do, I have this graph with all these charts. I'm just going to make sure that line bifocal is sitting in their level. It is. I'm going to test the height of the bifocal. That looks good. I'm getting 17 millimeters. And now I'm going to put the lens into my Marco 101 lensometer, of which you will get a very dusty overhead view of. It comes out to Plano for the top part which means no prescription. I'm going to test the bifocal strength and I get a plus 175. Everything's in quarter increments. Hopefully you can see that's one, one and a quarter, 150, 175, and two. So that is done. Now, the nice thing about these, this frame will last you for years and years. I can always cut just lenses only and ship them to you. And I can show you again how to pop the lenses in and out. In fact, now's a good time to do it. Should you ever need other lenses, you just have to, let me fold the camera down, thumb your nose at the idea of changing the lenses out with your thumb at the nose. I'm right-handed, so I grab the frame with my left hand. I use my thumb, and you can torque the frame. You're not gonna hurt the frame by doing this. And use your thumb to push outward. Out comes the lens. In order to put it back in, I start at the outside corner, and again, with the thumbs and the nose. By the way, I went from the frame being downward to I flip it upright because I'll be pushing down. I tuck the outside corner in first, and with my thumbs at the nose, I push down and it snaps right in. So in the future, should you ever need other lenses, I can cut them. You don't have to buy another frame. I can send the lenses right to your home or to your office, to your job, to your camper, 
to your airplane wherever you want me to ship it to. So we're almost done with the left lens. I'll do a final inspection on the frame and then I'm going to test the transition part of your lens just to show you how they darken. Hope you can get some pretty cool effects with the letters in the background as I move the lens. The top part of the lens should be clear and the bottom part should magnify as I go over the letters. Okay, the left lens is done. Let's bring it out of the chuck. Dry it off. Onto the safety bevel. And this is just a flat handstone. It works by friction. I can just put my hand on it and it's not going to do any harm. Scrape that off onto the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Watch my 10 part instructional video that I'll be releasing soon showing you how to wipe things onto the floor. The first nine steps just preps at the 10th volume I wipe with my hand. So again, I tuck the lens in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I push down at the nose. Perfect. I'm going to de-block your lens. I'm going to use my graph again to make sure that both lenses are level and sitting straight. And they are because I've done this so many times. I got 17 millimeters before. I'm going to check again. Do that. Yep. I'm going to test the pupillary distance. That looks good. Now again, I'm going to check the power of the left lens. Plano, meaning no prescription. Raise this up. Check the bifocal strength. Plus 175. Now, one thing I am going to do is use my optical grade acetone and clean my marker off of the lenses. My red sharpie marker, my Visa Vis pen or Staedtler, Lumacolor, whatever this might be. Can you believe that this pen is eight bucks? But it writes on lenses with anti-glare coating and there's no beating that. So, and one more thing I'm gonna do before I have the lenses turn dark is I get everything in what's known as standard alignment which is a three-point stance with the temple tips and the bottom of the frame being the three points, this being one and these being two. I put it on the counter to make sure everything is sitting level. I press on each side so there's no wobble. I flip it over, do the same thing. That is perfect. Every frame shipped out is, has standard alignment. Okay, now I'm going to take your lenses. You can see how they are clear now. I'm going to put them in my little transitions box, turn on my very strong ultraviolet light, and we will watch them darken. Now all transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks they're gonna to continue to darken for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. I joke, it's like a new employee on the job. You just have to train it for two weeks to get them perfect. Now, transitions will only turn dark when ex direct exposure to the sun. They will not do it indoors. They will not do it behind the traditional windshield of a car unless you have a convertible or a motorcycle. They will not darken. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's ultraviolet rays so your upholstery doesn't rot or your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun all day long. That's what prevents your transition lenses from not turning dark in your car. They'll get about 20 to 30 percent, just not 100 percent. Now, as soon as you step out of the car, they will get very dark. One more thing I'd like to mention while they're out, the light went off. So you can see how they are now darker than they were before. And again, they're going to continue to darken. This was just a quick burst. The sun is going to do much, much, much more to this once you get outside. Now, even though they are in standard alignment, if when you get these, if they're loose or tight, or if one side is higher than the other, take them to any optical shop. 99% of all optical shops do free adjustments. So just go in and tell them what's needed. If you notice on my glasses, my right ear is lower than my left. So when I put mine on the counter, they wobble like that because I do. I'm the 80% have one ear that's higher than the other. But for now, yours are completely level where mine are not. Um, so again, every optical shop does free adjustments. Just pop on in there. They'll get them straightened up for you. I will include instructions on how to care for your Ray-Ban leather, Italian leather case and your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth so they will last you for years. No other seller does that for you. I also include a photo request for you to send me a picture of your selfie so I can put it on the website because I am very proud of the work that I do and I've taken thousands of pictures of all my patients in my in my brick and mortar store and I have them on digital picture frames here for people to look at. I do appreciate it. Blade Man Christopher and Norfolk, Virginia. You're going to be a lot cooler now. Virginia is going to be much cooler when you're rocking these things. 
and thank you for taking the time. If you notice, it takes 30 to 45 seconds for them to darken underneath the lamp. It takes a little bit longer, 45 seconds to a minute to turn light again once you're inside. Thanks again, Chris, Christopher, Blade Man. And this is one of the many, many ways that I can bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.